guys, it's Laurel Ann. Today I'm doing the Bougie Booktuber Tag. This was created by Olive over at A Book Olive, and I was tagged by Michelle Lexi and Pauline over at Dancing Lawn. So thank you guys for tagging me because I'm very excited by some of these questions. I'm coming at you today from a different location. These are all of the books I have in my house, aside from the ones that I'm currently reading because they're, you know, scattered about. And I live here with my boyfriend, so only about half of these are mine. So, you know, I just wanted to illustrate how truly unbougie I am. That leads me into the first question, which is, what is your average monthly budget for books? Short answer, I don't have one. These are the two books that I have bought for myself in the entire year of 2019. Um, this one was £14.99 and this one was 12 euros. Um, so divide that by 10, I guess, and you get my monthly budget. Although I did buy my boyfriend um, a three month subscription from a local independent bookstore. That was like 30 pounds, I wanna say. So I guess you could count that into my budget as well because let's be honest, if you're buying books for someone you live with, it's really a gift for yourself. Next question is what's the most you've ever spent in a bookstore? I have no idea, I'll be honest. I am not someone who tends to buy a bunch of books at once. I just don't find that particularly satisfying. <laughs> um, so it would probably have to be around the holidays when I'm buying books for other people. And even then, I think it would be under $100. Question number three is, are you willing to pay full price for a brand new release? Or will you wait until you have a coupon or there's a sale? If I'm buying a new book, I generally will pay full price because I prefer to shop at independent bookstores, especially since I live in Edinburgh where there are just so many incredible independent bookstores to support. And I find that if I'm not willing to pay full price for a book, then I probably don't need to own that book and I can get it from the library or wait until I can find a secondhand copy. That being said, I'm not gonna pretend I'm perfect. I have been known to do big book depository hauls around the holidays when I'm buying books for like everyone I know because um, I don't make a lot of money, so we do what we gotta do. Would you rather buy one new book or several less expensive used copies? I love used bookstores. I think they're a great place to spend time, a great way to take a chance on something you don't know, and a great way to discover something new. But I definitely do buy more new books for myself than used ones. And I think that's because owning books right now just isn't a big priority. So when I do buy a book, it's more about the experience of buying it than owning the book. So if we look at these books that I've bought this year, um, this one I bought on a day trip to St. Andrews where I went into one of the most stunning independent bookstores I've ever been in and I just really wanted something to remember the day by, and I also just wanted to buy something in this like lovely shop. So that's why I bought this one, and with grief, um, I bought this one at Shakespeare and Company in Paris, which I've mentioned before, it's just one of the coolest places in the world. They also stamp their books uh, when you buy them, uh, so that just makes it a really nice little keepsake from your trip, because I, I don't really like to buy souvenirs, they are useless to me. Um, so I like to buy a book when I go somewhere new sometimes just because I think it's a nice way to remember a time. And that was a long answer for a simple question. The next question is what do you think is a reasonable price for a new hardback book, a paperback, an ebook? I think just generally we are very used to things being very cheap. Oftentimes less than they're worth or should be worth. So, you know, in that context, $30 for a new book can feel like books are really expensive, but you have to keep in mind that when you buy a book, you're not just buying this object, you're buying the text inside. A lot of people have contributed to that. You know, it's not just the author and the printing press. You have the author's agents, editors, copy editors, design teams, marketing and publicity teams, and you know, the process from manuscript acquisition to a book hitting shelves takes one to two years. So that's a lot of labor that publishers have to pay for. And that goes for ebooks as well. You know, even though the materials don't cost anything, 
there's still all that stuff inside that all those people worked on. But when you buy a book at a discount, that's not just the retailer taking a lower profit, less goes to the publisher as well. And Amazon and other discount book retailers, they're not the only ones, they can do that because they're major players in the market and they have huge bargaining power. Amazon has even been known to essentially hold publishers hostage in order to force them into unfavorable deals. So then, of course, that leads publishers to cut costs which lead to restructuring and layoffs. But unfortunately, one of the easiest ways for publishers to save money is by paying authors less because writers are gonna write whether they get paid or not and publishers know that. You know, we hear all the time about these six-figure advances, but the reality is that in 2019, the average advance is less than $10,000 for hundreds of hours of work and um, royalty percentages are going down as well. So even as book sales have gone up in the last few years, it's becoming harder and harder to make money as an author. Long story short, I do believe that the prices set by the publisher, that's the fair price for the book. <laughs> but you can think about it another way as well. Like I could so easily spend 15 pounds in an hour at a pub with my friends, or I could spend 15 pounds on a book and you know, I'd spend five to six hours reading it, maybe more, depending on the book. Um, plus all the extra time I think about the book and get joy from it that way. Plus I get to keep this beautiful object at the end. So if you think about it that way, books are actually, I think, a pretty cheap form of entertainment. Is a signed book worth more to you? How about a first edition? I think signed copies have a little bit more sentimental value to me, especially if it's in a case where I met the author at an event, but I would never pay more for a signed book. And as far as first editions go, like I'm, I'm not a collector, so that means nothing to me. What is your most valuable book? Sentimental or actual value? Probably, at least in terms of the books that I have here, uh, there are more at my parents' house. It's probably my copy of Lolita. I read this in a couple of college classes, so it's pretty heavily annotated. Um, and I also have lent this to a bunch of people, so I just know like a lot of people who I love have read this. Yeah, every time I move, I bring this with me. Will you pay more for a cover or edition you like better? Uh, not typically but I will go out of my way to avoid a movie tie-in edition. What physical characteristics does a good quality book have? I like when a book will sit open on its own on a surface so that I can, you know, like eat or do my hair or whatever while I'm reading. So that's generally these like floppier paperbacks that you get in the US. Like, yeah, see? See, she's doing her own thing. I don't have to help her stay open. Good job. Also, when a book doesn't fall apart, <laughs> how's that for a hot take? Like those original hardbacks of Harry Potter that were published in the US, I swear, those things just do not stay together. Entire chunks, entire chapters will fall out, and I know this is not just me. I know. If you won the lottery, what bookish things would you do with the money? One thing I think I would definitely do is go back for another master's degree, <laughs> either in English literature or maybe an MFA in creative writing. Those aren't things that I really feel comfortable with pursuing at the moment, but if money were no object, hell yeah, I would sit in a classroom and read some more books. I'd also like to go to New Zealand, which is not explicitly bookish, but I would definitely visit Hobbiton if I went there, so it counts. Okay, and the last question is to give us an image actual or mental of your dream home library. I'm not interested in anything too fancy. I definitely want custom built shelves just because I think they look a bit more legit. I want a library ladder because I can pretend to be Belle. I would love a fireplace, uh, preferably wood burning because cozy and just a lot of really comfy seating. All right. That's it for me guys. I know I went a bit overboard on some of those questions. Um, I just recently wrote a master's dissertation that was partially about the book industry in the UK. So it's just something that I happen to know something about and to be like pretty interested in and kind of passionate about, I guess. If you want to do some more reading, I'm going to leave some resources down in the description, including a really great video by Britta Bowler that she made um, about the cost of books. That's it, I guess. Uh, I'll see you later. Bye.